Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, I'll give you all an introduction to Kafka Streams API. This lecture is going to be a theory lecture. Let me start with some basics of Kafka and then I'll slowly dive into the Streams API in Kafka. At the core of Kafka architecture, we have the Kafka Broker. Kafka Broker is where the actual data resides and the broker is responsible for handling client requests. We have two basic client APIs named Producer API and Consumer API. The Producer API is responsible for producing or publishing data into the Kafka topic and the Consumer API is responsible for consuming events from a Kafka topic and take action on those events. In addition to this, we have two advanced client APIs, Kafka Connect API and the Kafka Streams API. Let me start with the Connect API. The Connect API is further divided into two types, the Source Connector and the Sync Connector. The Source Connector is responsible for reading the data from an external data source and publish the data as events into the Kafka topic. The Sync Connector is responsible for extracting the data from a Kafka topic and write it to a external data source. The next advanced API is a Streams API. This API basically reads the data from the Kafka topic and there can be many different things that can be performed on the data. We can apply transformations, data enrichment, branching the data into multiple data streams, aggregating the data or joining the data from multiple Kafka topics and then writing it back to the Kafka topic. I hope you all have an idea about the different client APIs to interact with Kafka. In this specific course, we are going to explore the Kafka Streams API in detail and we will build production grade applications using some real time use cases. Let me start with some introduction to Kafka Streams API. Kafka Streams is a Java library which primarily focuses on data enrichment which involves transformation of data, aggregating the data and joining the data from multiple topics. And Kafka Streams API uses the functional programming style. What this means is that we will be using lambdas and operators such as map, filter and flat map that got introduced in Java 8 to build your functionality in your Streams application. What this means is that Kafka Streams API is built on top of Java 8. So you need to have experience working with Java 8 features in order to build applications using Kafka Streams API. Now let's talk about how the data flows in a Kafka Streams application that's built using Kafka Streams API. The Kafka Streams application initiates the stream processing by subscribing to one or multiple topics which is the first step in the whole flow. The second step is to act on the data from the Kafka topic. This involves a different type of operations that I explained in the previous slide such as aggregating the data, transforming the data or joining the data and etc. Once the processing completes, the idea is to write the data back into the Kafka topic for the downstream applications that are interested in this data. Behind the scenes, basically the stream API uses the producer and consumer API to read the data and write the data back into the Kafka topic. Now you might have this question on the back of your head, how is this different from the consumer API? Consumer API pretty much starts a whole flow by reading the data from the Kafka topic. The applications that we build using consumer API are stateless. Now the next question is what does stateless even mean in the context of consumer API? Let me explain this using the data flow in a simple consumer app. In the consumer app, what we do, we basically read an event and process the data and then move on to the next event. So consumer apps are great for notifications or processing each event independent of each other. The consumer app do not have an easy way to remember what's been read. So there is no easy way to join or aggregate events. This is where Streams API shine and it has a capability to build both the stateful and stateless application. The stateless application using Streams API is very similar to the applications that's built using Kafka Consumer API. But the only difference is that Streams API uses functional programming style which is different from the Consumer API. Now let me talk about the stateful applications that can be built using Kafka Streams API. So if you think about retail, we can use the Kafka Streams API to build applications to calculate the total number of orders in real time. Or we can build a Kafka Streams applications to calculate the total revenue made in real time. The word real time is really key here because 
we will be able to calculate as the orders flows through the system in real time this is really powerful in today's uh, market requirements let me give you another example in the entertainment field we can build applications to calculate the total number of ticket sold for a given movie in real time or we can also do the total revenue generated by the movie in real time these are really interesting use cases for stakeholders who want to know how the market is actually performing in real time now the next topic that i would like to cover is what are the options that we have when it comes to implementation using the kafka streams api we have uh, two different options available in kafka streams api to build streaming applications number one is a streams dsl approach this is a high level api and it has some predefined operators available to build your streaming logic the operators are map flat map and there are many of them we will explore each and every one of them in the future part of the course the second option is a processor api this is a low level api it may not be intuitive to work with when it compared to streams dsl that's why i mentioned this is a little complex compared to the streams dsl and another thing to call out is that streams dsl the option which i talked about as a first option is built on top of the processor api in this course we specifically going to explore the stream dsl because pretty much all the type of application that you want to build using kafka streams api can be built using streams dsl i hope you have a good idea about what kind of applications that can be built using kafka streams api with this info let's go ahead and start exploring the streams api and build applications in the following lectures this marks the end of this lecture thank you for watching